Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar uh, on developing your IP and startups with corporate strategic alliances. And joining us this afternoon is Eastman Chemical Company, uh, where they'll talk about their technology priorities as well as how they partner with university startups and other external partners. But before we begin, I'd like to let everyone know that this webinar series is being held um, in order for us to find startups that are aligned to the needs of members of our corporate selection committee. And Eastman Chemical is one of the members of our corporate selection committee. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about you know, the upcoming University Startups Demo Day on October 16 and 17 in Washington, DC. So that event basically highlights uh, three main programs. So one is the Demo Day where we accept companies from universities or startups submit companies to us and uh, they get scored by our corporate selection committee and the highest scoring companies get to gain presentation slots at the conference as well as we organize meetings for them with interested corporations and investors. The second highlight is the IP to Startup program um, where we also ask universities, inventors, researchers, to submit IP or patents. And these patents and IP are also um, to be scored by our corporate selection committee. The highest scoring uh, patents and IP will be included in an IP book for distribution to corporates who are interested in licensing it or developing it into a company. Uh, basically, the IP to start a program is for us to help universities and inventors to know how aligned their, uh, their technology or their inventions are to the market. And the last highlight of the demo day in October is the inventor, Investor Roadshow. Um, we actually have an American Chinese uh, University Growth Fund and we, aside from, you know, aside from that delegation of, of Chinese VCs that are coming to invest in university startups, we'll also have angel, angel investors and VCs in the United States and the U.S. to look at deals as well. So basically, the demo day in October is uh, a networking and deal conference. So if you're interested in participating, you know, submit a startup, submit an IP or come to the conference in October and get to meet all the corporates, investors, and the other universities that are there. Um, just a, you know, just a quick um, housekeeping reminder. We will have Q&A at the end. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask them by typing in your questions in the questions box of your GoToWebinar control panel. Having these corporates speak in these webinars, considering their very busy schedules, is an opportunity for you to connect with them by asking questions. So I hope you take advantage of this opportunity if you do have questions for our speaker today. This session is recorded, so we will have the video up 24 to 48 hours after the webinar concludes. If you're interested in watching the past uh, webinar recordings, just go to our YouTube channel and you'll find the other, uh, the other corporate webinars there, such as Eli Lilly, BASF, uh, Pfizer, and... Um, Okay, I'm forgetting someone, but anyway, it's all there. You'll be able to see all the videos of our past webinars there. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over now to, to our speaker today. But before that, let me introduce him. So his name is Dr. Brendan Boyd. He is the Director um, of R&D and External Innovation of Eastman Chemical Company. So he basically leads external innovation where he advocates for partnering with companies or universities to accelerate the company's growth programs. So, so I'll turn it over now to Brendan to give himself a better introduction and um, to start us off today. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rhea, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, calling and taking time out of your uh, busy days um, to, uh, to learn a little bit more about Eastman Chemical Company. So as Rhea said, I'm the leader for our external innovation group at Eastman. And external innovation at Eastman, uh, Rhea, pretty much hit the, the nail on the head. Part of what we do is work both with universities to kind of, to work on kind of jointly, mutually beneficial research programs. And then when there are opportunities to work with companies, startup companies, or uh, usually startup companies or kind of earlier stage companies, 
uh, we'll partner up uh, that company with uh, an internal uh, group within Eastman and try to facilitate the uh, discussion there. Um, we can be a, a pretty good entry point for companies that see a potential fit with what Eastman wants to do and with a technology or a service that they are, are developing as well. <clears throat> so what we'll do overall today is uh, spend a little bit of time giving you an overview of Eastman um, and then I'll tell you about some of the innovation focus areas that uh, we have at Eastman as well as some of the wants within those innovation focus areas in terms of what are technologies or um, Kind of different functionality that we'd like to be able to incorporate into our products uh, that that we would be willing to partner with other folks in order to deliver to the market. Um, and then at the end I've got a couple of slides around uh, our overall engagement model. So if you can go to the next slide please Ria. All right so uh, Eastman Chemical Company. We're a, a global specialty chemical company that's headquartered in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. So we were a spin out of Eastman Kodak and have been publicly traded and independent since 1994. We're about $9 billion a year in revenue and have about 14,000 employees over about 50 manufacturing sites. And we have about 1,400 or so employees in uh, R&D as well as in innovation uh, around the globe as well. Uh, our primary R&D center is in Kingsport, Tennessee, but we have larger R&D centers that are kind of more uh, focused on specific uh, businesses uh, in the United States and Europe, as well as a, kind of a joint uh, business and R&D facility in Shanghai and China. Uh, we serve customers in over 100, com 100 different countries, and uh, we're dedicated towards environmental stewardship, uh, social responsibility, and economic growth. Can go to the next slide, please, Ria. So um, Eastman is a fairly large uh, company that has uh, four different main business areas that we focus on, four different reporting segments. Um, and, and this is a good slide in just kind of going through what those four business segments are, as well as the, the primary product technologies that they focus on. Um, the first one is additives and functional products uh, and advanced materials is the second one. And when we think about Eastman, those are the areas that a lot of our uh, growth programs run in. We also have um, some significant growth programs in fibers, uh, particularly in the yarn and textiles areas. Um, and a lot of the, in a lot of these businesses, uh, Eastman usually has a market leading position for the, for the types of products and the end markets that we sell into. Can go to the next slide, please, Ria. So overall, Eastman sells into a wide variety of end markets. If you look at the pie chart on the, the, the upper right quadrant, you can see that uh, we're fairly well distributed into a number of different end markets. And that gives us a lot of touches and a lot of ability to collect market insights from uh, different points in the value chain as well as from very different uh, value chains. We do have a fairly good exposure, though, uh, almost half of our end market exposure being in transportation. Uh, various consumable products, as well as in building and in construction. And, and we're a multinational organization as well with uh, revenue, a little about 45% about in North America, and then the rest um, mostly split up between Europe and then Asia Pacific. You can go to the next slide, please. So um, if you kind of get beyond the, the business organization structure and you think about Eastman Chemical Company, we uh, we operate by what we call a platform principle, which means that uh, if you start off on the, the bottom, there are technology platforms that we have that we believe are, are world class. And these are usually uh, chemical or, or, or polymer based technology platforms. Um, we then send those through application platforms uh, that connect to different end markets, which is the uh, horizontal uh, at the top. And so um, those technology platforms that we have that we think are, are truly world-class are uh, uh, polyvinyl butyryl, oxo derivatives, modified uh, polyesters, both thermoset as well as uh, thermoplastic, um, cellulose esters, uh, various hydrocarbon resins, insoluble sulfur, and uh, alkyl amines. 
And within Eastman, um, in our growth-focused businesses, we have application platforms that we sponsor and that we develop as well. And so uh, if you take, for example, um, the coatings formulations area, uh, while we do not sell uh, final coatings that, like formulated coatings that you might, per like a decorative coating that you might purchase at a Home Depot or Lowe's or that's applied to your, your, your automobile, uh, we sell raw materials that go into those coating uh, formulations. And within Eastman, we have an application development capability both around the formulation of a wide variety of coatings as well as the necessary application equipment so that it can be applied to a variety of different substrates in a way that's very similar to the in-market customers that we serve. And within these areas, thermoplastic conversion, functional films, rubber formulations, textiles, non-wovens, and adhesive formulations are where we believe that we have uh, advantaged application platforms that um, we continue to sponsor in order to uh, satisfy the, the needs of different end markets. And one of the, the big things that we always look for is how do we kind of modify the uh, chemical or, or polymer product attributes in order to, to meet a functionality or a requirement that's coming from an end market. You can go to the next slide, please, uh, Rio. So if we take one of the, the larger market segments that we have, transportation, um, here's an example of all the different types of uh, touches that Eastman Chemical Company has to the transportation market, both for, from an OEM perspective as well as an aftermarket perspective. And given the, the diversity of technology platforms at Eastman, um, within the transportation sector, Sometimes we're a component supplier, meaning kind of like a raw material, uh, again, chemical or polymer. In some cases, we're actually take those components and we convert them into different products and then sell them directly into the OEM or the aftermarket. A good example of that are our window films business, which you can see there called uh, Lumar and SunTech vehicle, which help with uh, thermal management and light management within an automobile. You can go to the next slide, please, Rhea. Similarly, within building and construction, um, Eastman participates both as a raw material supplier into different um, market segments, uh, as well as selling uh, finished products and uh, as a converter. Um, similarly, we sell uh, Lumar and kind of window films, performance films products, as well as uh, PVB uh, glazing solutions in the architectural market too. You can go to the next slide, please, Ria. So kind of transitioning from uh, who is Eastman, kind of what are, our, what are our technology platforms and what are our in-market focused areas, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the innovation focused areas for, for us. Um, so one of the things that we're probably uh, best known for um, to consumers is uh, the Eastman Triton material that goes into a wide variety of uh, water bottles. It's a thermoplastic polyester. Um, uh, that uh, people have uh, converted over to. Um, when we think about needs that we have in the, in the business that supports the thermoplastic business, um, one of the particular needs there are around uh, flame retardants. So um, particularly things that are non-halogenated and compatible with uh, PET and, and co-polyesters. So that'd be one of the areas of need that we have. Can go to the next slide, please, Rhea. Uh, within our, uh, our, our coatings in market, um, what we focus on from uh, an organic product development uh, perspective is focusing on uh, BPA and I uh, type of coatings for packaging. This is food and beverage packaging, uh, as well as uh, advanced uh, resin technology that can go into uh, automotive and other kinds of transportation uh, coatings. And so what I'd say in particular, um, one of the areas that we've seen a lot of research and investment in is, is different ways of um, coming up with uh, BPA, NI types of uh, resins, cross-linking systems and things like that within the, uh, the coding sector. And so that would be an area that we'd be very interested in should uh, anyone have any um, technologies that they've developed in, in that area. Um, in the transportation area, part of coding is anything that can allow us to help um, our customers and our customers' customers achieve higher coating durability, 
uh, improved scratch resistance, higher um, kind of productivity in the application process, or overall reducing the, the VOCs would be of, of interest to us too. If you can go to the next slide, please, Rhea. So um, one of the other end markets that, that we uh, fell into is in architectural glazing solutions. And, and an example here is uh, our advanced interlayer safe flex acoustic Q series uh, product. Now, in, in this case, what Eastman is actually uh, selling is a polyvinyl butyrol uh, film that's sandwiched in between two pieces of glass and, and goes into architectural glazing uh, within, it, and that is uh, considered kind of a safety glass material. But uh, the laminate glass provides improved security, reduction of unwanted sound, and better safety through the filter of UV rays. So when we think about um, our uh, kind of the, the needs that we have within um, our uh, functional films area within um, within architectural, certainly things that can help improve the uh, management of UV that might be able to be incorporated into a, a PVB film or other kinds of functionalities that would be um, uh, appreciated by architectural uh, architects and designers. Things like uh, dynamic glazing or other solutions that can help manage uh, light uh, and heat that go through windows would uh, be of interest to us. Can go to the next slide, please, Ria. Uh, similarly, this is an example of that PVB uh, interlayer solution that also goes into the um, the windscreens of uh, automobiles. In this case, uh, this is highlighting one of the products that we've launched recently, which is for heads-up display. So modifying the, um, the optical physics of the PVB layer to help uh, with the um, image crispness of the heads-up display on the, uh, the windscreens. And within um, our advanced inner layers area, within, particularly within heads-up displays, some of the things that we're looking for are technologies that can um, increase the uh, the field of view um, that can also accomplish variable uh, virtual image distance. So uh, as you're getting closer and further away from the, the windscreen, how do you maintain the crispness of image? Um, improved resolution and, and enabling other content on uh, a windscreen. Similarly, within the transportation segment here for uh, advanced interlayers, we are looking at uh, switchable glazing technologies, so um, kind of being able to change light transmission on demand that uh, can occur fairly quickly and have a wide dynamic range. Um, we're also interested in uh, heatable interlayers, so anything that uh, you can incorporate a, a heating function into the windscreen so that you might be able to defrost ice and other uh, for uh, defrosting ice is uh, one of the, the areas that uh, we would have interest in in talking with folks about. Overall, um, I'd say those are kind of the, the wants that we have within the, the transportation segment, but should there be concepts that um, folks on the phone, universities or startup companies have that can put other kinds of functionality into uh, uh, automotive glazing solutions, architectural glazing solutions, or into um, uh, films that are applied to to windows uh, in the aftermarket. Those are all areas that we would be uh, interested in, in learning more about. You can go to the next slide, please, Rhea. So kind of transitioning what's uh, Eastman's engagement model with universities and with, uh, with startups. Um, so Eastman, we, we do believe in an overall um, being members of an innovation ecosystem. And so um, when we think about how we try to launch products, we try to launch them within uh, by working with multiple partners in the, the value chain. So that can be um, in-market customers, consumers, uh, but we always try to make sure that we're working throughout the value chain to understand how our value proposition works. With universities, um, we have a, a number of different uh, sponsored research agreements with universities, but kind of the, uh, the the crown uh, jewels for us in terms of our university engagements are the uh, multi-year agreements that we have with North Carolina State University, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, as well as the, uh, the University of Tennessee. And these are traditionally um, uh, 
uh, master research agreements that go over several years and have um, uh, uh, kind of outline a, a basic amount of uh, funding that will go on. We actually have a Eastman Innovation Center on the Centennial Campus of North Carolina State University, and we've got the staff actually embedded within that university, and that staff uh, runs a request for proposal program in which both uh, internal stakeholders within Eastman can identify areas of need that they have, and, as well as opportunities coming in from the university that may be of interest to Eastman. And so that's been a very successful partnership for us. Uh, when it comes to startups, uh, we are a uh, limited partner in Phoenix Venture Partners, a venture capital firm focused on um, uh, the material science uh, sec sector. Um, when it comes to, to working with, it can be uh, startups, uh, early stage kind of post revenue uh, generating companies or kind of more mature companies. We've got a wide variety of, of tools that we've used in the, in the past to work with those types of companies. So anything from joint development agreements, uh, occasionally joint ventures, um, and sometimes we'll actually do acquisitions specifically to kind of build out capabilities as well. You can go to the next slide, please, Rhea. So overall, here's our uh, external innovation staff and uh, uh, so you can contact us either uh, by using the, the email address down there, should you have any connections that you would like to make, uh, or you know through LinkedIn or, or other mechanisms. Uh, and we'd very much like to hear uh, what opportunities you think might be a fit with us. So with that, that's the uh, kind of the, the end of my part of the presentation, Rhea. I do want to thank everyone again for, for calling in and uh, participating. All right, thank you, Brendan. And again, uh, Eastman Chemical is participating in the demo day as part of the selection committee. So another way for you to be able to, you know, for, for you to be sure that your company gets seen, gets reviewed, um, especially if you're in the field of chemicals or in the other, you know, in the other interest areas that Eastman, uh, that Brendan um, highlighted today, make sure you submit to the demo day. Um, there is a deadline tomorrow. The early deadline is tomorrow, uh, July 14th. So if you do have a company or IP that fits, please make sure to um, go onto our website and submit uh, before tomorrow's deadline. All right. So with that, I'll turn it over now to Q&A. We do have a few questions lined up. It's going to be a pretty busy afternoon for you. So uh, right now we have about we have about 10 questions, but we'll try to get through them like really quickly today. Just so everyone <laughs> <Okay>. has, <laughs> so that we get the chance to, you know, um, it, 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 it's always very helpful to, uh, to, to be able to answer these questions online, especially the, looks like they're really good questions today. So I'll pull up the first one. Here you go. Um, so the first one is about federal labs. Are you interested in fed lab technologies? If so, what kinds of transactions are possible uh, with a national lab from your perspective? Yeah, so if there's a, an area of mutual interest there, we're certainly interested in it. Um, we did have national labs on our, our ecosystem, and we do, do we have done in the past, and do do some work with uh, different national labs. Um, so are we interested? Definitely so. And then uh, what kind of transactions are, are possible? I think we try not to be prescriptive on what the, the model of interaction is until we understand what it is we, we want to accomplish together. Um, we do have uh, CRADAs uh, as well as kind of one-off engagements. Yeah. All right, perfect. So our next question is a little more technical. Tell us more about petroleum resins. Okay, that one's a little <laughs> tough. So, uh, uh, petroleum resins. So we, uh, we have uh, uh, some uh, resins, I guess, if you think about petroleum resins, they can come from uh, some of our polyesters, which fit that as well as some of our hydrocarbon resins. Um, yeah, uh, what I'd say is maybe reach out to us and we can have a more specific conversation about that. Okay, our next question is, do you work more with startups that have angel or VC funding? 
we uh, we have uh, in the past and in our are right now. Um, so so yes, I think uh, you know we probably work more with uh, with earlier stage companies than, than later stage companies. Okay. Uh, in R and D partnerships with universities, do you do one hundred percent sponsored research, or are you looking for matching funds from government grants? You know, it's always great if you can get the matching funds from government grants, but uh, we've been known to do uh, a number of one hundred percent sponsored research agreements as well. Uh, I think it's just kind of looking at on a, a case by case basis. Uh, certainly, when we get into the um, relationships that we have with our Center of Excellence at North Carolina. State University, as well as our innovation network schools, uh, those have tendency to be more sponsored research than looking for matching funds. Another question is: How many transactions does Eastman do each year with startups, and are and what are the the range of dollar amounts? Yeah, so if it's uh, below a materiality level, we usually don't talk about it publicly. Um, uh, so uh, probably can answer that one uh, directly. Okay. Uh, here you go. Oh, this is another good one. When you work with with a startup, what does your partnering group do for the startup specifically, e.g., mentoring? Okay. So when um, most of our interactions with startups, I think the model would be. Um, we would be working together to uh, accomplish a goal. So there is a, a learning that occurs on, on both sides of it. I don't think we necessarily do mentoring for mentoring's sake only with startups uh, at this stage of, of where we are, but uh, there certainly is some of that that goes on as both parties learn from each other and kind of progressing a technology to market, for sure. Okay. I mean, I think if we're when we're actively engaged in working with another company, both sides learn quite a quite a bit. Okay, great. Um, here's our next question: Do you help develop companies if a startup you're interested in is too early? Well, we haven't necessarily run uh, across this one uh, uh, in terms of a specific example. But uh, if, if we saw, hypothetically, if we saw a company that was a, a little bit too early in terms of being able to take a, kind of a, a concept off of a, of a blackboard and reduce it to a, a prototype, um, we do have some connections within the, uh, uh, the VC world, and we would be able to kind of match them up with different, different folks. And we've made telephone introductions before uh, in the past with, uh, for folks. Okay, uh, Brendan. FYI, we have uh, one, two. We have three questions left, so looks like we still have we still have time. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the next one. Um, how active is Eastman Chemical with the nematicide product? Are you looking for nematode <laughs> control technologies? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that is uh, so. So somebody has some uh, potentially insight into us. So uh, that that is an area we've got um, within our additives and functional products business area. We have got a, a crop protection um, business within that, and uh, that that would be an area that we would be very happy to to sponsor a uh, or make a connection. With the uh, the R and D and then the marketing folks in that that business, if you had a uh, a technology that you thought uh, kind of offered differentiation in uh, controlling uh, nematodes, so uh, absolutely. And, and we're not just a, a nematode company. So if there are other crop protection types of strategies or opportunities that that companies have, we would certainly uh, be be uh, desiring to uh, to learn more about those. All right. Here's our next question. How long does it take on average to get a yes or a no on the transaction with a typical startup? Yeah, so it kind of all depends on where the, the startup is in terms of having a crisp business case that outlines kind of the use of funds to get to. Um, if there is a, uh, you know, uh, that's one factor. I think the second factor is just 
how how good of a fit is the um, the, uh, the the technology that the startup has with a, a need and kind of the the go to market um, strategy that that we're taking in that area. So uh, it's hard to say that there's an average because a lot of it depends on on both sides. All right. Our next question is: As an angel investor. How can I work with Eastman to find startups that Eastman may have an interest in seeing developed? Yeah, so so great question there, um, and this goes back to that that platform principle slide. So um, as a company, we try to be mindful of the choices that we make in terms of the the end markets that we're going to focus on, as well as being able to answer the why is Eastman relevant to satisfying that that end market um, need with one of our uh, technology and application platforms. So uh, I would kind of start there. And if you've got a specific question, you know, contact us uh, uh, about that. And we'd certainly like to at least talk through it with you um, in terms of seeing if there's a, a good fit or an ability to partner with, with you on that. All right. And I think we're coming up on the last question this afternoon and I think this is a good closing question also uh, for you to you know um, give advice to the rest of the, the the people in the audience but the question is, what advice would you give to an individual who is not affiliated with a startup but would like to create a startup to meet your corporate needs <laughs> yeah so uh, that's a that's a, a good question if it was one of our specific uh, corporate needs, uh, then, um, you know, you might consider just how would we, we work specifically uh, together. I mean, um, a lot of ideas start off as individuals that, that want to accomplish something. There's uh, certainly angel networks that can provide some of the initial funding to kind of work through what the business case is, or at least to get that initial um, prototype in so that you can have something that you can hand to somebody. Um, I, I would say if there's a particularly good fit with what your concept is and with what um, what Eastman is trying to do, uh, we can actually be a, a pretty good partner in, uh, in trying to, to test out those concepts as well. Um, and that probably falls into the kind of even the, the JDA area. Okay. And for, um, and for universities, do you have the same advice if they want to create companies or sponsor IP that fits into your technical needs? Yeah, so, you know, part of the reason why, uh, why, we, why we wanted to participate in this is to try to um, certainly give uh, universities and tech transfer offices a, a little bit better idea of who Eastman Chemical is and what some of the areas that we're working on are so that they might be able to kind of connect the dots between technologies um, or intellectual property that the university has and, and areas that would be of interest to to Eastman um, and, and we we have inbound pings from tech transfer offices um, and we try to give those the, the same level of uh, kind of analysis that that we do with uh, startups as well okay so Brendan thank you very much for you know your participation today um, that is the last of our questions uh, this afternoon. But before we wrap up, um, again, we'd like to thank you uh, for participating. And we'd like to thank the audience for joining us today. Uh, but before we close uh, today's session, I'd like to remind everyone that you know the submissions for the demo day, uh, our first, uh, rather our first deadline, our early deadline, will close tomorrow so that's july 14th so if you want to get into the early deadline which i recommend you should uh, that way the corporates um, have enough time to review your application to to you know to 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 view them we have enough time to review them as well if you have errors or you know to give them back to you if there are things there are items that need to be improved so tomorrow is the deadline um, and all you need to do is to go to our website and you'll see that the um, that the links or the buttons to apply are are all on our website and you can see you know all the information about the demo day as well as the application deadlines um, and other you know dates and deadlines in the 
um, in the timeline. You should also see, you know, who our selection committee is for each demo day. So we have a pool of corporations that we work with um, every cycle. So hopefully, you know, each of these, you know, there are companies here that 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 fit your startup or fit your IP. So we're looking forward to receiving your applications, um, you know, for this deadline or the next one. Okay, so thank you again for joining us. Again, Eastman Chemical is here and participating as part of our corporate selection committee. Again, thank you very much. And we hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.